When it comes to smash factor, not all of our clubs are created equal. So a really efficient smash factor with a driver would be 1.50. So if I swing this driver 100 miles an hour and I have a smash of 150, I'm gonna have a ball speed of 150 miles an hour. That's fantastic, because the driver, I want to maximize my distance. But when we get to the other end of the bag and we start to get towards the shorter clubs, especially say the pitching wedge, which tour average is about 1.23 on the smash, and then when we get to the lob wedge, where we want to try and get that smash intentionally down under 1.8 for some speciality shots, that is very, very different. And the reason is we want to control our spin, our trajectories. We have a lot more precision with the shorter clubs. They're not designed for us to hit them as far as possible. We want to hit a very specific distance, a very specific trajectory, and with a specific amount of spin. So in order to manipulate those variables, we want to change our smash factor. We sometimes have a face that's more open, sometimes we have a face that's more closed, sometimes we have a shaft that lays back, sometimes we have a shaft that lays forwards. All those things are going to affect your smash. But when we get to a lot of really competent and advanced and the elite short game players, they hit a lot of shots towards the toe where the smash is going to be lower so that they can impart more speed, which creates more spin, but obviously they're not gonna hit the ball as far because there's less smash. And that becomes very, very significant for those crazy low spinny type shots that golfers hit. So understanding that maximizing your smash isn't always a good thing. In fact, with your shorter clubs, you're gonna see a quite a big variance in the smash, but the reason that the smash is lower as the clubs get shorter is because you're not trying to maximize distance. You're much more focused on maximizing your spin and your control.